I've had this penthouse now since the year 2000 because when I bought the building in 1995, I had to then find the architect, Ricardo Ligaretta, and convince him that this was an up and coming area in London and would he do his first building in Europe for me. So it's, it's my rainbow penthouse on top of a pink and orange museum building. I use this place for either dinner parties, which this one I have laid with wonderful Carol McNichol China. And she'd worked with me for say two months. And she said, oh, I'm going to the Royal College in the ceramics school. And then for her final project, I commissioned this lovely quilted dinner service and it's got my button flower prints all over it. You know, I've treasured it for all those years and I'm probably going to end up donating it to the V&A. It's still one of my favorite pieces. I collect stones from wherever I go in the world. So I have a collection of stones, which is quite wonderful. I have a dinner party almost every weekend. It is great. I love getting people together who might not have been together, who might not mix, and you hit and miss. Now and again you make a mistake, but normally it can be quite fabulous. And you never know what happens, you know? To dinner I had Deanna Vreeland and Larry Hagman. I sat them together and Deanna Vreeland said to Larry, what do you do? And Larry said, well, I'm, I'm a cowboy in a, in a Texas series. <laughs> It's quite wonderful watching this area of London develop. I'm gradually seeing buildings creeping up, but it does remind me almost of a new, a new kind of New York because I used to go and stay with Divine and he had what I used to call a pent hut on the top of a building and all around him, you'd have, I'd have to go from one of his little huts to another one in New York and you'd see all the people in buildings and the cleaners and all the buildings lighting up. So who knows what's going to happen, but not totally in my lifetime. My partner sadly passed away just before COVID. And it was always understood that when I wasn't with him, I would come back to live in London. From when he was 91 right up to 98, Andrew Logan did a, a framed picture of him and he used to love those going up the, the wall as he went upstairs and looking at, at that to celebrate his age. I think colour makes you feel happy. You know, I was once given a challenge of wearing black every day for a week. I did feel somewhat funereal. It didn't last very long, but I think I plonked a lot of Andrew Logan brooches on it to make myself feel interesting. <laughs> Originally, my career was to design for wallpapers and interiors, and then I got into doing dresses, and then I've come back to the world of interiors. So it's been a very exciting textile adventure. Everything started when I did the design first for Savoir beds. Then a bit later, I designed the wallpaper of Manhattan and they've got the commercial pale colours, but I thought I know I could do my bedroom in, in the pink and the flashing lights of, of, of pink and, and gold on, on black wallpaper and I knew it would look lovely. So the feature was that and then I could put all my pictures around the wall and I got Andrew Logan to make me a special mirrored frame for my TV so it just looked like another picture on the wall, so I could live in paradise. And now it's really, I come in here and hope that I sometimes have friends, we sit on the end of the bed and watch the television and just enjoy ourselves, which is something totally new to me. Thank you.
The wallpaper in my hallway is, is my zebra print that I originally did in the early 80s. And, and I could choose the most extreme versions of the color, like the Manhattan wallpaper in my bedroom. And it's been wonderful to, to use those things so I can show people how fabulous they are to live with. I think I've, I can say I'm very lucky and I've enjoyed all of the bits of my career and they've led me to wonderful adventures that I'd have never thought of doing otherwise. I think what I always say to people when I'm lucky enough to see students is don't let the world crush you down and say don't do something because then you'll never get anywhere. You've always got people that would tell you you're not doing it right. Follow what you want to do and try your hardest and in the end something will happen because you're, you're leading away in something. Mm -hmm.